relying on the Nigeria Media Code of Election Coverage as his backrest, Arokundade tells us that for a journalist to report elections accurately without bias, in a fair and balanced manner, he or she to gather the news from reliable multiple sources who are willing to provide virtual evidence. Another essential ingredient of balanced reporting is that the journalist should balance to eliminate biases from his reporting. What is expected, I quote him, is that the good election reporter must understand his or her bias and refrain from allowing such to affect his or her needs judgment, that being and dissemination. End of quote. Equitable coverage of all political parties is yet another ingredient of balanced report. During election, the tendency is to cover top shots of major political parties. Baruch Udade argues that this kind of election reporting is so complete without paying attention to the underrepresented groups, such as women, persons with disabilities, and the large number of our people living in the rural area. Allied to this is the need for the election reporter to be so informed that he knows what the issues are so that he can call attention to them, if necessary, set agenda with his report. The author gives many tips on conflict reporting during election. According to him, since election is a means through which people express diversities which are always conflicting in nature, it is critical that reporters covering election see themselves as agents of mediation, engagement, and amicable inter intervention. There's a long list of what to do in this book to develop the antenna for careful reporting of conflict during election. When elections are over and government starts in earnest, Larry Arogundade says that that's the time to call those in the saddle to proper account. Which of the promises are fulfilled at what cost? Which of them are broken? To do this is to be a consensual functional member of this fourth estate of the realm. And as the political reporter does all of this, accuracy in view with fact-checking mechanism to be the watchword. Finally, distinguished guest, let me end with Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States of America, who is quoted by Larry Arogundade approvingly in this book. Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of the U.S., said, and I quote him, Why it left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate at all to prepare the latter. End of quote. That, in a sense, captures the spirit of this book. And it is a spirit that celebrates the power of the media. Yet, if you have enormous power and you don't know how to use it, how to use it positively to build a good society, you are irresponsible. When we stop interpreting, interrogating, inspiring, guiding, and challenging our country, as writers and journalists. When we 
doing something all of that. We are wasting our talent and gift. I thank you so much for this. I belong to a generation that was privileged to have witnessed what we used to call the traveling theaters. And so, as a kid, in OCAPT, where I was a student of St. Paul's Primary School, I was privileged to watch so many dramatic personnel, Fumilayo Ranko, Ishola Ogunshola, Aisho Pepe, they would come and stake their play in our classroom at St. Paul's Primary School. And so, I became enthralled, I became interested. And by the time I got to primary three then, I was already a member of the school band and of course a member of the school uh, drama group because I also have this talent that I could actually mimic any human being's voice. I can speak exactly like any other person. And Mo, Gani Pawemi is already shaking his head. Eh, Mo, Mo. Ah, I can see also. Eh? Yeah, that, that one is almost disrupted, but uh, we have to be there for Laruzel. Eh? Buku? And that's madam. Thank you very much. So I believe I had this talent, and I always wanted to act. But you know, there are also many other talented people, and several times they will not pick me. And I will fight and fight and fight that I must be picked to act. So we will man the stage, I will hold a notebook just like this, and the pen, and then I will sing that song. It was always my proudest moment. And then I got to Ekiparako College, Idoekiti. And we also used the opportunity to recognize all my mates here. Also, those are my, my classmates of 40 years ago. And we were lucky to have a vice principal, Chief Abiola Fatui, to whom I also dedicated this book. Who just gathered up? I think we were in Form 4 then. He was our vice principal, he was also our English teacher. You know, in those days we had many teachers. We had up to about five people teaching us English and English literature. And he said he wanted to introduce a magazine called Ekpako Voice. And he gathered a group of us together. And because I was the social prefect of the school, I was made the social editor of that magazine. So that was my first step into journalism. And then, of course, to the School of Arts and Science in Ondo, and then Great Ife, where you all know my story as a student union you know, leader, but you probably don't know my story as a campus journalist. And then Lekon Otufoduni, who I think is the audience, and we please, uh, Lekon Otufoduni, where are you? Has actually thrown a challenge that how come the University of Ife, now Bafinawolo University, does not have a department of mass communication or a school of uh, mass communication and yet, that's who has produced so many journalists. Fule Ajibade is ex ife Feli Ojudu is ex ife and so on and so forth. Dr. Kianti Gulu is ex ife But the reason is that we were, we were in the university where the environment was conducive. And so we all had our different magazines. I was reporting for Petras Magazine and The Combatants, the magazine of the Alliance for Progressive Students. I think Ojudu also had his own magazine then. I think it was The Bank. I think, if I'm correct, the parrots, and then we have Bang, and then we have Cobra, you know, and all those magazines. So I was a campus journalist, and then I was NAS leader. But that brought me to newsrooms, distributing press releases. And of course, one of the newsrooms I used to visit then was the Punch newspapers. And I just liked the environment of the newsroom then. Eric Teniola was the news editor. We see him, he will come to me and say, ah, Larry, you didn't come to greet me. I'm also a comrade because his mama was there. And invariably, the Republic newspapers was funded and I found myself there. I never really looked for any other job. I had worked briefly at Akaba Shoros Chambers as a resource class. 
But all the job I was looking for was to work in the media. And I do recall that while staying with one of my uncles in Bariga, Uncle Akonbi Owofolaju, I wrote an application to work in Newswatch magazine. And then I was on my way to Newswatch, and then I stopped at the newsstand to read the newspapers. And then there were those bold headlines, Delekiwa had been assassinated. I wasn't deterred, invariably the Republic newspaper was established, and I became a reporter who never studied journalism. But there was this man who, just, who had known me because he was in Punch Newsroom when I was a student leader, and took an unusual interest in me. And of course, I started as a biased reporter. I will go and cover protests of workers at Beret. I will come back and write all those kind of things. And this man will call me and say, Orewa, comrade, you say you relate to you. Story collecting for you. By the time you get the book, you will see that I dedicated to my mentors in journalism. And that very first mentor is here in this audience, a complete gentleman, Mr. Tokumbo Olorotola. Please rise up and let me. We call him Babai Rui. And then he will say, Ah, Orewa, Ella Tiko is here, you. He will ask me to follow him to his house in Idimu, Lagos. I used to like food a lot. I will be hungry. He will say, Orewa, as you phone yell, no. I continue to train him how to write. Then he introduced me because he was living together with Niro Malalu. Nero was a very, very good sub-editor. I got the encouraged me to start a column. My first column was called, uh, you know, the, the campus, writing for the Republic. So Tokumbo Olorotola will take me to Nero Malalu, and Nero will start teaching me how to plan pages, the way we used to plan pages in those days. So Nero is another mentor that will be well uh, acknowledged when I write my next book on journalism, which will be titled The University of My Newsrooms. Nero Malalu, thank you very much. Please, Nero, where are you? Proprietor of Rock City FM is a great you know, mentor. It's a long story, and then I was in Concord for a brief period of time because the place was shut down. But I worked with wonderful people, and Isikak Essie was the editor. It was from Isikak that I first learned the virtue of balance in reporting. Our publisher went into politics, but he would insist that, look, for every single SDP story you have on our front page, you must get a story of the NRC, because those were the two stories there. And throughout that period of MKO's campaign, uh, Concord, National Concord, was never accused of you know, being compromised politically. And the Tuji Bello, my good friend, who was our political editor, will bear witness to this. So I recognize Mr. Kat Essien as one of also my mentors in journalism. Can you please give him a round of applause in absentia? And then Concord was shut down, and I had to look for job. Where else would this man work? It has to be in the chambers of Ghani Re, because Ghani Fawe and me had started the National Conscious Party, and uh, the masses had been established as the organ of that uh, newspaper. Again, that chapter of my life would be in my next book. Richard Akinola was my editor at the masses. I was deputy editor. And he used to have his own battles with Steve Gani Power and me. Because Gani would say, splash anything there. And Richard would say, no, there's ethics of this profession. And one day, Gani called me and said, Naruse, for you two, you are a journalist. What is this ethics? What is this ethics? And then we started calling uh, Richard Akinola Mr. Ethics. Because for Gani, just splashes there. So what are you saying? They are killing hundreds of Ogonis. You know, chief that time. When he comes, he can even go to a lawyer and say, my friend, what are you working on? He'll say, is the case of, no, no, no. Ogoni, Ogoni, Ogoni. <laughs> then he will go to the next table and say, what are you working on? I do something. Oh, Ogoni, Ogoni, Ogoni. <laughs> a group of young radicals with whom I had gone to the university, the likes of Bolaki Adebi, Tunde Aremu, at that stage first, I need to move into the LUJ university. We do have various uh, codes of election coverage, some regulated, some self-regulatory, that says journalists should do this. But they are just like prescriptions. They are like when a doctor says, you know, you have headache, go and get this drug at the pharmacy. 
The pharmacist will give you that drug, but he will now explain to you how to use the drug. So this book is more about the how of our job as professional journalists when it comes to balanced reporting, eliminating our biases, ensuring that we do not stoke conflict during electoral processes, and so on and so forth. I think one of the things that should be done is what we are doing through this book, to further build the capacity of journalists on their responsibilities during you know, elections. But it's not just for the media alone. For the EU recommendations to be well implemented, all the relevant stakeholders have to come together. The government, INEC, the media, as a media professional groups, we need to really sit down and have a post-election conference where we draw the balance sheet. If we say the media did not do well, did the media get enough support? Uh, Mr. Dakwalor Yomi, the publisher of a Premium Science, for example, has suggested that during election period, the media needs to be provided with some resources because the constitution in Section 22 gives us the responsibility of monitoring governance and holding government accountable to the people. That particular responsibility uh, comes to the fore during the electoral processes. So we need more engagement for us to be able to implement the recommendations of uh, the European uh, Observation Mission. Well, because I feel that uh, even though we have just finished an election, election cycles are very short. Bet between now and the end of the year, we have two governorship elections in Kogi State and in Bayesta State. And before you know it, we are going to start having campaigns for 2023 elections. So I felt, let us begin to prepare now. And I'm also looking at younger journalists and students who are in school now, who by the time of the next elections will have become reporters. And that is why the book is written in very practical terms, giving details, giving examples of what they can do. So for me, it's quite relevant because we're still in the election season. This is the right time for us to talk about media and elections and our professional responsibilities. And I have to go into history, the history of elections in Nigeria. I have to study various reports of various election observation you know, missions. And of course, when you do a book like this, you have to subject it to peer review. So I also had to give it to a, profession, a, pro, a professor of mass communication, Professor Mui Wapukola, to review for me and uh, you know, look at the gaps. And after his review, he said, look, you have a good product in your hand. I, I can say that it's not very easy to write a book. I used to joke that uh, I went to a college, it's a college. I did not go to a grammar school. So there's always the problem of grammar. You don't want people to pick a book and say, look at what he's writing. So I had to subject it to another peer review by a, a, a grammar expert in the media, Mr. Femi Akitude Johnson. And uh, after all that was done, I felt satisfied that I have a product that I can push out. They should, they should, they should dig deep and let us know who, what does the party stand for? Who are the candidates contesting? You know, what, are, what is the manifesto of each of the political parties? So uh, what is our next preparation and readiness for election? And all of these things, the media need to be fastidious about it and tell us exactly what the, we allow the public to be informed to the point of being able to elect the right person to, to office. The, the role of media is very crucial in election, particularly in developing countries here, where the need for enlightenment, the need for people to come out to vote, the need to analyze party manifestos and also getting feedback from people too. But I will tell you, if you look at, if you evaluate the role of media in Nigeria election, to me is below satisfaction. And why? There is a problem of ownership and control. I have taken pains to see that uh, government control media is always biased in favor of parties that is controlled at national and of course at state level. To that extent, the government owned media is not as free as the private owned media. The private owned media too, to a large extent, follow you know, the interest, political interest of their proprietor. So what Lara Grada has done now is to come out openly in that book, the seven chapter book, to advise you know, journalists of professional responsibilities. Whether they take it or they don't take it is another thing. But he has come out with this brilliant encyclopedia of what you know the role of Nigerian journalists and globally should be. I would refer have I mean the only editorial process. I mean I've gone through the, the, the I mean the book and I I would say that it is you know a book that any journalist 
who is interested in covering election professionally should have.